Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshops. Great to see you here. Today we are gonna be talking about honeycomb beds. Recently, Comgo reached out to me and said, hey, we'd love you to check out our new large version of our honeycomb bed. So we're gonna go over to the details of this one and how a honeycomb bed can help you improve your cutting ability and quality on your dial laser. So if that's something that interests you, stick around, we're gonna jump right into it. All right, so Comgro sent this uh, honeycomb bed out and uh, we've used honeycomb beds here in the past. I've talked about it in a couple different videos. Uh, and uh, typically they've been smaller, they fit inside the laser cutting area. Um, instead, this one's large enough where this, uh, the Comgro uh, D1 can actually set up on top of it. And so, um, and it overlaps uh, front and back. So you truly have a uh, full honeycomb surface all the way across your cutting area, as well as if you're using slightly larger lasers, uh, those will also fit on top, um, giving you more uh, more honeycomb surface for your cutting area. So uh, that is one of the reasons why you might wanna go with one of these larger ones. Um, this one is great. It does also come with a tray uh, on the bottom, which is good. It helps protect the surface that it's sitting on, uh, as well as this one, um, it has a lip to set uh, the honeycomb in however, I'm going to talk about why I wouldn't use it in that configuration a little bit later um, However, having the uh, the tray below it does help uh, prevent any uh, errant laser beams from marring the surface that you're uh, working on It also acts to catch any of the smaller parts that might fall through All right, the size of this bed front to back. It's uh, about 23 and a quarter or 59 centimeters uh, front to back and then it is about 23 and 5 eighths or 60 centimeters side to side. And that's the outer dimensions. The actual, the actual uh, honeycomb bed here looks to be about 21 and a half inches front to back or roughly about, we're looking at uh, 55 centimeters front to back. And then uh, side to side, we're looking at just a hair under 22 centimeters or or sorry, 22 inches and uh, 56 centimeters side to side. So that gives you your actual cutting area of the actual honeycomb part of the bed, uh, excluding the outer frame. And so uh, that, that is plenty of surface area to cut on most of these where your, your uh, lasers are about that 400 by 400 millimeter cutting area. And so that's one of the nice things is that it does give you full honeycomb surface across your entire cutting area. Uh, it is a, a well-built frame. It uh, has, it's riveted together. They include some uh, protection tape on all the corners. I've actually removed it from the top uh, and the sides just to make it easier. It was catching on a few things as I was sliding in and out of a few things, but um, they do protect the sides. And the inner part is steel. It is not aluminum. And that gives you the benefit of being able to use magnets to help hold your material down. So we're gonna talk about material hold down later and I'm gonna show you a, a way to make some of your own jigs using some plywood and magnets uh, that we can actually cut out on the laser as well. So uh, having it be steel um, allows you to use those magnets. It also helps keep its rigidity a little bit longer. Sometimes the aluminum ones, they're far easier to bend. Uh, much like fins on a radiator, you get pressure on them and they'll buckle over and you get too much of that and then it becomes uneven and there's more flash points. Speaking of flash points, one of your biggest purposes of why you would want to use a honeycomb bed is to minimize the surface area that is touching your material. And this is primarily when cutting. If you're engraving, it really doesn't matter uh, because you just need a flat surface, your beam is not going all through the material. But as that beam goes through your material, it's going to hit whatever is underneath. And you want that to be as minimal as possible so that it allows the gases to escape and it reduces any sort of flashback and charring that comes on that backside because there's, if there's just a solid piece of material, uh, the, the fumes and the beam and, and the residue have nowhere to escape to. So the honeycomb bed is a nice flat area with a lot of support, but just has these super thin pieces of metal that is uh, resting on. And so that's one of your big benefits. Now you can get away with just elevating your material, supporting it on the side with some bars, or uh, even using a, uh, a cooling rack. However, uh, you run the risk of having uneven uh, support. 
and uh, or parts may be falling through those thicker webbings of uh, of the cutting sheet or, or the the cooling sheet. Uh, this will support smaller items so they don't fall partially through and get in the way of your laser head. So uh, again, that's one of the benefits is providing a, a very open but flat surface uh, that uh, provides that consistent focus distance for your material. So, um, okay, so as I mentioned, uh, one of the reasons that you're gonna use the honeycomb bed is to allow that the, the gases and the smoke to have a place to move through instead of just getting built up underneath your material. Now, they provide this uh, sheet metal tray and it's got a nice lip which will hold and contain this frame quite nicely. However, uh, when it does that, this honeycomb tray is sitting on that lower tray. Uh, and so your, your smoke and your gases, they're just, they don't have anywhere to go. So the real benefit to using this is to have an air gap under there. Uh, so the very the simplest way to do that um, is to just take some blocks of some consistent material. So I've got some three quarter inch plywood blocks here. Um, that is a nice consistent material because again, you want to keep this flat and level. And all I would do is then take these and since you do have the lip of this tray, you can just shove one of these into each of the corners, just like that. And then this will sit on top. It will raise your tray up, allow air to pass through that smoke can come now down through and actually move out rather than just staying under there. There is a slight danger that if you don't have that smoke uh, able to escape and some positive airflow moving across underneath uh, to pull that smoke away, you can get what are called micro explosions from that, uh, that smoke and the gas reigniting when it's hit by the laser. It's rare, but it can happen. Uh, and so that's just one of the reasons I like to have this small gap. Uh, if you can actually have this in an enclosure and have your exhaust pulling down from this level to make sure it's pulling both from top and bottom, um, that's gonna get you a little bit further, but you really wanna make sure that the air is not gonna get trapped in these small honeycomb cells. And so lifting it up like this is perfect. The tray still works to protect you underneath uh, and it should catch any small pieces of debris that go down below. So uh, let's get the laser set up on here and uh, let's actually go through and show the difference of cutting on just a flat material versus cutting on the honeycomb. Okay, we've got the <clears throat> laser set up and we're gonna be cutting just some eighth inch Baltic birch plywood. And I've got another piece under there and this is gonna simulate cutting on just a flat surface. So we focused off the top of here. We've got just a simple one inch octagon that we're gonna cut out. Um, there's no air assist. This is just the straight laser cutting off of a flat board. Um, it is sitting on top of the honeycomb just to make this whole test easier. But um, we're gonna run that really quick and see how it looks. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's move our laser out of the way. And as you see, it cut through, but if you look at the back side here, we can focus on this. You'll notice all this residue on the back, on both sides, as well as some deep charring on our support piece as well. So, as you can see there, um, it's very dirty on the back side. Even though the front side fairly clean, it would be cleaner if we had air assist going. Um, we'll cover that in a future video. Uh, but uh, there's no air gap, so all that energy and all the fumes and uh, residue, um, they're just getting applied to that board and the back side of this one. So, now let's reset this up. We'll focus it on top of the honeycomb bed run it again and compare. Okay, this time we had it cutting off the honeycomb. So here's the front side and here's the back side. So front, back, I should have switched this, but this is the back with being right on top of there, this is the back being on the honeycomb. You see it's very clean as it cut through there. There's no real overburn 
Um, it's allowing all those gases and the debris to move through it. And then if we had had air assist going, um, even this top side would be very clean. So um, best combination, air assist on the laser, honeycomb bed as a support to get really clean cuts front and back. And that's just a close up. You see where it's got markings in here. That's where that debris, the sap, the smoke, that's come through the wood. It's going into the honeycomb and it's not getting marred on the back side of your project. Now that is something that is a maintenance item on here. You do need to clean these on occasion. Best thing to do is take some simple green, spray it down, let it soak for a bit, rinse it off with water, set it out in the sunlight or uh, blow dry it off. Keeps that a lot cleaner, keeps your, uh, keeps your material clean as well. So another side benefit of using the honeycomb tray as your surface is using warped material. Uh, and so especially when you get some of this thinner stuff, sometimes it has sides that will stick up. And sure, you can flip it over, but now the middle's sticking up as well. And so uh, for real consistent, accurate cutting, you want your focus point to be consistent across the top. It means both your bed and your material need to be level. Um, and now if you can get this to flatten out by you know using some humidity and, and press tricks great but not everybody has time for that and sometimes the curve is okay you just need to get the piece cut out well the honeycomb bed gives you some options and so you can use a very a variety of hold down clamps from just sheer little weights um, to the fact that it's steel you can use magnets you can get different size neodymium magnets and they will stick to this bed i'm going to show you how to make some custom ones or if you have a 3d printer you can print out these little T-posts. Um, there's different designs that are available. Um, some of them are on Thingiverse. Uh, some of them are uh, shared throughout other groups. And what these do is they press down into the honeycomb cells themselves, and they are just big enough to fit in there with a little bit of friction. And what they can do is you can put your material in, and you run these clips just down to the side of them, put one down on the other side just to catch that edge and then it will hold your material flat. Now you want to make sure that the tops of them are no thicker than your focal distance otherwise the laser could run into them and hit them and you also want to make sure that you're not going to be going to your edges with your laser because you don't necessarily want to cut through them so uh, make sure you use a laser safe material no matter what it is whether it's wood or uh, some PLA plastic like these are. So what, if you've got a 3D printer, great, print them out. You can also find some online from other people that are selling them. Um, or let's look at how you can make some wooden ones yourself. All right, so the first set we're cutting out are just these simple little kind of L or J, depending on which uh, direction you hold them. But uh, they're just simple little pins that have a curve. And the important part is that this section goes down into the honeycomb, and you want to size this to the size of your honeycomb cutouts and then what you do is you can just push them into there and give them a little twist they'll snug up against the walls push it down that's going to hold it down the other part to be sure about is that you make this top part uh, shallow enough so that it travels underneath the head of the laser shroud or the bottom of the laser shroud um, when it's focused on the top of your material. So these can stick up a little ways and uh, as long as you have that the right height. So uh, these are fairly easy to draw. I will try to leave a link. I will try to share this out uh, so that if you want them um, you can go ahead and just download that and cut these out. So I just cut these out of 8 inch Baltic birch material. Um, real simple. You can just use scraps. Um, they're very effective, very quick to cut. Um, it doesn't need it to get any fancier than that. All right, we've got our pieces cut out and what we're simply gonna do is we're gonna take these bottom pieces, we're gonna glue them to these top pieces and then we're gonna glue the magnets in here so then this would sit down and this would probably have lip. Now I'm doing this out of 16 inch material because that is the thinnest material I might wanna use. You might wanna make these uh, based on different material uh, if, if you're using a lot thicker stuff. You might wanna make a set for each size just so it's easier. Um, but this is just a, you know, this is a very simple uh, real trial and error thing here. You might need to make some adjustments to the size of your tab, but um, we're just using some simple CA and accelerator. So get your uh, your choice of that. You could use epoxy. 
um, but you really do need to hold these magnets in fairly well. So I'm going to start out by gluing these top or these uh, magnet sections to the other pieces of plywood because that'll give us more to work with. Just going to put a little accelerator on there, put this in place. Uh, it doesn't need to be exact, but just kind of want to line it up with the sides there so that it uh, sits nice and smooth. And uh, maybe just clean out those a little bit. Do the same thing on this one. Well, be careful not to get too much glue in there, otherwise you'll clog up your magnet holes because you do want those to sit somewhat flush. And so, hit this one with some accelerator. Get it lined up with the side pretty well. All right, now, if we size these correct, we should be able to just drop in some CA on each one, um, and then we can put our magnets in. So I'm just going to put in a little CA on each one there and there, and then these should just press down into each side, push them down nice and tight, maybe flip it over and give it a nice tight press so they're nice and flush like so, and then it'll see a little CA accelerator that'll soak down in. Let's do the same thing with this one. A little glue inside there. Grab two more magnets. Push them into each hole. Get it. Push it down nice and tight. Get them as flush as you can. So, and then hit them with a little accelerator. That will cure really quickly. And then we can test it on our material. All right, so we've got these tabs that they'll stick to this pretty well. They're not terribly strong that you can't pull them off, but it should assist in holding your material down and provide enough clearance. So here's our piece that we just used to cut those out. What you can do is you can just put these along the sides both areas and um, wherever you need to hold it down. So like if you need to make more of them, you can. Like here you see it's got a little bow that should help hold it in. Um, and then as you can see, we still have plenty of clearance for our laser. So you can easily make these as many as you want. Um, these are just a six millimeter or quarter inch magnet. So you just draw up a box, draw up some six millimeter holes, or if you have larger magnets, measure the size, draw those holes, put them in there, and then it just has a little nail lip there. The magnets sit flush on the steel bed. The tab part holds down the material. Simple as that. Easy. You can make these yourself with your laser. And uh, once again, I will share this. Uh, if I can, I'll put a link down below uh, to where you can download the file and play around with this. And uh, like I say, you can enlarge it. You can use larger magnets. Um, these are just simple, simple drawings, uh, basically squares with rounded corners. So, uh, nice little project for you to try to draw up yourself, but I will leave the file if you want to play with that, uh, on your own. All right. There are three simple kind of DIY. Um, one takes a 3d printer, but two of them, uh, you can go ahead and make with your laser. Uh, like I said, um, check that out, check out, I will try to leave some files down below if you want to download those to play with yourself. Um, but thanks again to Comgrow for sending out this honeycomb bed. Uh, this is available on their site and on Amazon. I will have links down below to where you can pick up one of these if you would like it yourself. And uh, I think having a honeycomb is a great investment into your laser, especially if you do a lot of cutting. And this is one of the largest ones uh, with a steel bed uh, that you can get at the best price uh, as of this video. So once again, thanks to them for sending this out. I hope you found it useful. Um, check it out for your laser as well. Um, we're going to be getting back into the swing of things, trying to do some more videos on uh, tips and tricks with lasers as well as some more equipment that's coming in. Uh, winter's coming here in Minnesota. It's going to get cold, so I'm going to be working on some about improving my indoor use of lasers uh, while keeping myself safe, keeping my family safe, both from uh, the operation of the laser and the fumes that it creates. So uh, stay tuned. Check those out. And uh, if you haven't, um, maybe consider subscribing. 
And uh, if there's some comment you have about your use of these or questions, leave a comment down below. I do try to answer those as best I can. And uh, that's what's great about this platform is community of sharing. So hope you enjoyed this. I hope you found it useful. And uh, get out in your shop and make something. We'll see you next time.